This is Pete Bissonnette, and coming up is your third session with Anat Benil on the Neuro Movement Healing Fast. Follow along with our guidance, take it easy, and as you've learned, don't be concerned about doing it perfectly. You'll be freeing up your pelvis today, which is a way of freeing up your entire body. I'll be back with you at the end of the session. Here's Anat. Enjoy. Welcome to the third lesson of Neuro Movement for Whole Body Fitness. I'm so excited. Every lesson I know you're going to learn more, you're going to do more, and more will open for you. So let's just very quick do a reminder. What, how are you going to go about doing the lesson? Just tell me. Slow. Perfect. Fast. You can only do what you already know. Slow is for learning something new. What else? Gentle. Gentle. That's right. Redu reduction of force in increases the sensitivity and the ability of the brain to notice what's happening and to perceive differences. What's next? You pay attention to how you feel. It's a very subjective process. Growth, learning, change is always you change in relation to yourself. It's not an external thing. So f feeling your s the in noticing the feelings you have as you move, accelerate brain mapping, differentiation, and learning new things. And uh, another one? Enthusiasm, that's right. And enthusiasm can sometimes be jumping up and down and being so excited and running and telling everybody that's a great enthusiasm. And when you do those lessons very slowly, Everything gets very calm, but internally you can amplify. Internally you can get delighted. Internally you can say, this is magnificent. I couldn't do this. Now I can do it. And the willingness and the ability to get enthusiastic about what people oftentimes call small changes. In my world, there isn't a small or big change in the brain. There's either a change or no change. What's small or big about it is our judgment of its importance or our realization, the relevance of the change. So that by bringing your own enthusiasm, you're making sure that not too much is lost. This lesson, we're going to focus more directly on the pelvis. We've already brought it into the conversation, so to speak. What I've discovered over the years working with large groups of people and with individuals that most people have a very uh, rudimentary uh, awareness of the pelvis. And in my understanding, that means that in the growing years and developing years, the pelvis was a lot out of the picture. So the brain learned to map and learned to include and manage. For instance, the fingers and the hands are very much there. The lips, the tongue, very much there. And they have a very dense major presentation in the motor cortex, in the sensory cortex. The pelvis is like a little, almost non-existent dot. However, the most powerful muscles are attached to the pelvis. So no matter what movement we do, the pelvis, from a mechanical point of view, or the muscles attached to the pelvis, are supposed to generate their share of the work. And when they don't, the smaller, more refined muscles do both the hard work of the pelvis and the more refined movement of the extremities. And that's how people very often get either uh, inflammation, pain, injuries that way, because it's this, what I call disorganized. It, it doesn't match, it doesn't harmonize with the way the body is built. And as you have probably already noticed, the brain is really an amazing, amazing responsive system. So the moment you change what you do a bit, you can really change that a lot. So we're going to reintroduce the pelvis to you today. Lie down. And first, just scan for a few, for a minute or two, the way you're lying on the floor. 
And I'm going to let you do it more independently. I'll just remind you the contact of the heels, the legs, the length, the spine, the shoulders, the back of the head, the arms, and of course the back of the pelvis, the abdomen, and the rib cage. Also, pay attention to the way you're breathing and whether your spine, your vertebrae, are starting to form in your mind's eye, in your inner representation, a bit more clearly, or maybe a lot more clearly, or maybe not yet. Just notice. And bend your knees, put your feet standing spread. And in this position, Pull your belly in so that the, in such a way that your pelvis will roll up a bit and the pressure will move towards the top of the pelvis. So contract your abdomen muscles and let the pelvis roll up so that you move the pressure towards the top of the pelvis. And then you let it go gradually so you come back to what I call neutral, to the starting position. And then do it again. Pull the belly in, roll your pelvis up, feel the pressure coming, moving towards the top of your pelvis, and then you gently let it go. And as you do this movement, notice if you sense any movement in your head. You see, the spine connects the pelvis to the head. The pelvis is the main generator of power, proportionally, the main generator of power in any movement we do. And the movement of the pelvis generates a force in, this, in the direction of the head. And don't move the head on purpose, but notice because when the brain organizes the skeleton in, 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 to powerfully and effectively execute motion, the force will drive through the skeleton. This, in this case, it will be through the spine. And when there is a movement, as the pelvis rolls a little up, the chin moves a little bit or up. And usually it's easier to feel it when you come back down and the chin comes a little bit down, then you feel it. And what stops the movement? Very often it's a, a, a too, much, too, too much stiffness, too much muscular contraction in the rib cage. In the small muscles and the longer muscles, they just are habitually contracted. So don't worry about that. And now do the opposite movement. That means arch the back, push the belly out so that the pelvis rolls down and the pressure goes towards the tailbone. And it's not lifting the whole chest up, it's arching the lower back and actually letting the ribs and the sternum be pulled down by the movement of the pelvis. And pushing the belly out. Put both hands on either side of your belly, your lower abdomen, just above the pubic bone. And now push, flatten your chest and push the belly out. The lower abdomen, just above the pubic bone, not, not a, a, a near your solar plexus, but just above the pubic bone, and do it as you exhale. So it's not the usual way people breathe, but for instance, cough, just cough once or twice, and feel that when you cough, that's the movement you do. You flatten your chest and you push the belly out. You feel that? You might want to cough maybe one more time or two to get familiar with the sensation. So when you cough, you exhale, you flatten your chest, and you push the belly out. There you go. So see if you can pull the belly in, expand your chest a little bit, and then flatten the chest, drive down the sternum, and push the belly out as you exhale. And of course, you don't, you know, leave your jaw alone. Do not clench the jaw or pick your shoulders or all kinds of things. Do it. You don't have to do a big movement, but gradually make a clear movement. There you go. 
That's what I mean when I say to push the belly out. That's the movement that animals do, like when they roar before they attack. They push the belly out. They don't pull it in. That's what martial artists do before they do a powerful movement. This is built into our nervous system. So now, and that doesn't mean you have to do it all the time, but it's very important to have it available to you. And now, Arch your, put your hands to the side, arch your lower back, leave the chest free, and push the belly out. That's a pretty uh, unusual differentiation for a lot of people. That means the brain does not know yet how to do it. So go very gently and slowly. There you go. Arch the back and feel like a very tiny mouse or a little bug could go from one side to the other. You make space for them to go under that bridge. And do it again. And now combine the two movements together. That means that you pull the belly in and feel if that has become clearer and pr put pressure on, towards the top of the pelvis and then arch your lower back and move the pressure over to your tailbone. So you do this kind of rocking movement up and down one time using the, your abdomen muscles powerfully and one time using your back muscles powerfully. That means you learn to alternate between those two. I see lots of people that have, you know, been trained through certain kinds of fitness programs to always pull the belly in as the mechanism of generating power. And that can be at times not a good idea. We want to have everything available to us. And now do this movement a little faster. So you, pull, you rock the pelvis up and down and see if your head now is moving, kind of doing the, mo the movement of saying yes, 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 yes. That's right. So the, p the movement is now translated more clearly. And do it a little faster. There you go. And stop it. Straighten your legs and rest for a minute. And feel just from doing those two movements and then combining them and focusing on what you feel and creating the imagery that as I talk about the skeleton and things like that, feel the amount of reorganization and change you already experience. And those changes correlate to changes in the brain. Bend your knees, put your feet standing. And now spread them comfortably. And this time, you're going to resume moving the pelvis up and down, except now imagine you're lying on a clock, on a face of a clock. 12 o'clock is towards the top of your pelvis, depends on the size of your clock, and 6 o'clock is towards the tailbone. So visualize that clock, that the, that the 6 is the tail, and 12 is the top of the pelvis, or towards the top of the pelvis, and now begin moving your pelvis to press on 12 o'clock and moving it to press on 6 o'clock. And notice whether once uh, you added that external relationship between the pelvis and the environment, in this case, the face of the clock you're lying on, if the movement is a bit different. That's very nice. Now that you have 12 and 6, then... You, to your left will be 1 o'clock, right? 1, 2, 3. So now lift a bit the right hip and bring the pressure over to 3 o'clock and push the belly out because it's your back muscles, mostly on the right side, that lift the pelvis and roll it over to 3 o'clock. 
And as you do that, see that whether you can soften the chest, whether you can reduce the efforts in your chest, in your rib cage. So the lower back can work powerfully, but that doesn't mean that the whole chest has to stiffen. And again, this requires a process of continued growth and evolution to learn how to do that. And it's extremely wonderful and useful to do that throughout life. Children do this kind of learning, what we call organic learning, furiously for the first few years. And as we become socialized and we get a degree or we learn a profession, we start working, we have a family, most people simply stop this process. However, human brains, not just human brains, I believe, but certainly human brains are built to learn. Our life, our, our, our safety, our staying alive is, is based in learning. So here, what you're doing now is you're resuming organic learning. You are keeping to expand yourself from where you've arrived thus far. There you go. And now leave that alone. And rest for a moment. And feel if one leg feels longer than the other due to this one asymmetrical movement. And feel also the rest of you. The length of the spine, which parts of yourself are becoming maybe clearer to you, come more to the foreground. And now bend your knees, put your feet standing. And now lift the left side of your pelvis and move yourself to nine o'clock. And see whether you, the first thing you do is contract your abdomen muscles. And see if you can go so slowly that you will actually have a say whether you're doing it or not. And don't go so far that you again lose control over how you move yourself. Soften the chest and roll the pelvis over to 9 o'clock and come back. Each time pushing the belly out. Now pull the belly in very powerfully for a moment. Hold it pulled in powerfully and try to go to 9 o'clock but don't free your your belly. If you really contract it powerfully, you cannot do it. It's a mechanical, physiological uh, uh, reality. It's not, a f it's not like a philosophy. It's just how the body is built. So now free the abdomen muscles so that your back muscles are free to work and help you roll the pelvis. It has a, those muscles have a lot of power, so the chest can stay free, the shoulders can stay free, the jaw, they are not part of the movement. That's what is meant by differentiation. You get more say in what you do, the more differentiated and, uh, and then integrated you are. And now move from left to right. So you go 3 o'clock, think of it in terms of the hours, and, and 9 o'clock. Three o'clock and nine o'clock. Push the belly out each time. Feel if your sternum is starting to slide down. Feel if your head does a tiny little movement. Also three o'clock, nine o'clock. Whether it translates through the spine a tiny little bit. Of course, in the head it will be a much smaller movement. And I do this movement a little faster. And feel if you're moving your pelvis symmetrically. And if you're not, do less on the side that you're doing more. Because that you can do. Doing more on the side that you are moving less, you probably can't do at this moment. So you can always reduce the amount on the side that moves more. And make sure it's your pelvis that moves and it's not your knees that flip-flop from side to side. The pelvis moves relative to the legs. And now come back to the middle. And move your pelvis 
12, 6, 12, 6, and see if that has become a bit clearer. And if the movement of the head is a little clearer. And leave that alone. Straighten your legs and rest for a minute. And of course, notice how you are now, what it feels to be you right now, how you're contacting the ground, which parts are feeling wider, closer to the ground, nicer, it feels good. And now bend your knees, put your feet standing. And now again go 6 and 12 and feel what your head is doing. And as you get the, into a uh, that rhythm of that movement, begin joining the pelvis with the head. And within one or two movements, take over so the head is doing the active movement and the pelvis is doing the passive movement. Now the head is smaller and lighter than the pelvis. So the pelvis is not going to be moving much passively, but see if the movement of the head is still influencing the pelvis. Six and 12 with the head and allowing the pelvis to be pulled up and pushed down. And now move the pelvis three and nine. So you start with the pelvis and see if the head at all passively, even you know one or two degrees to the side, also does something. Also has the inclination to go th three and nine, or not? It's it's not like you fake it or you force it or you do it you become aware of what is going on so that things can start changing and improving. And now start moving the head, not too much, in proportionally, to three and nine together with the pelvis. You coordinate it. And then do the head and see if the pelvis at all follows the head passively. It'll be a tiny movement in the pelvis because it's not a big movement with the head. And again, the head is a lot lighter. And leave that alone, straighten your legs and rest for a moment. And this is another example, of course, to sh to that shows that any movement we do is a whole body movement. So it's not just that we're develop offering a program of whole, whole body fitness, but if you want to be really fit, you better bring your whole body and your brain into the equation. And now bend your knees, put your feet standing. And we can get fit in other ways but bringing the brain and understanding how we learn can give us big, bigger outcomes and more people will actually get there. And now take the pelvis to 12 o'clock and then take it to 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock, that means to your left, and go all around digit by digit by digit. So do slowly circles like that and go move the pressure one hour after the other all around and notice that when you start you pull the belly in right you go to 12 then you go to one and gradually you let go of the abdomen muscles and you kick in your back muscles and then you get are only back muscles when you're in the six o'clock and then you go over to seven eight nine 
and then at a certain moment the abdominals start kicking in and the back is starting to do less. That means by doing a circle like that around the clock, moving the pressure, you are really waking up your pelvis by waking up your brain to the existence of the pelvis and by creating more complex configurations of movement and control of movement. And now stop for a moment and stay in the middle and do the clock in the opposite direction. So go to 12 and go to 11, 10, That means you're going counterclockwise. And notice which hours are less clear. Maybe stay back and forth a few times and s if it's harder for you to get to a certain hour, it's usually because your chest and or your spine will not go that way. So if you just reduce the effort and just go back and forth and then, you know, keep going, then again go back there, you will actually get a much better, organize a healthier back too. I wonder in a generation or two with all the digital clocks, this lesson will become obsolete, at least the imagery will become obsolete, not the movement. And now, take your pelvis to 12 and your head to 12, both actively. Take your pelvis to 1, your, your head to 1 and continue like that really slowly so you can think about your pelvis and your head at the same time and they do the clock at the same rate same speed they move from one digit to the other gradually and slowly there you go and see if you can remember i told you in the introductory uh, uh, video that awareness is a skill. We really can develop our capacity, our awareing ability through doing, for instance, what you're doing now. So in the beginning, you, many people have to, s to flip back and forth from the head to the pelvis. But eventually, you can increase your ability to do it simultaneously. So now go again to 12 o'clock, both head and, and, and pelvis. And now take the pelvis to 1 o'clock, take the head to 11. Take the pelvis to 2, take the, the, the head to 10. And continue very slowly, taking the two clocks in opposite directions. And if you lose the clocks or one of them, which oftentimes uh, leave the knees standing though, don't start flipping the knees. It's the pelvis that moves relative to the knees. And if you lose that, start from scratch. I mean, not the head, don't lose the head. If you lose the clock in your mind's eye, <laughs> either of the head or the pelvis or both, just start from scratch. Take your pelvis to 12 o'clock and take your head to 12 o'clock. And now take your, your pelvis to one o'clock and your head to 11 and the pelvis to 2, and the head to 10, and the pelvis to 3, and the head to 9, and keep moving those clocks in opposite direction slow enough that you are aware of on which time you are with the head and which time you are, are with the pelvis. And if you get confused or you lose track, just start from scratch.
And in the beginning, you might have to do one first and then, then the other afterwards until you can gradually smooth it out so you can actually do it simultaneously. Come around to this lesson again as you know you'll finish the program you'll either do another one or you'll do this one right away again you'll be amazed how much easier it will be the next time because once you introduce a possibility to yourself to your brain the brain keeps working in the background so now leave that alone and simply do one or two circles with the pelvis clockwise. Don't think about the head anymore. I mean, you can think about it, but, and feel, by the way, if the head is more responsive, that means the brain translates the movement from the pelvis through the back to the head. And do a few quick movements like that. Don't worry about the, the hours anymore or its perfection. Just do a few quick circular movements. Free, easy, free your chest. Just have a good time. Enjoy it. Don't worry about doing it right. And now do it the other way, quickly a few times. And stop, stay in the middle like that. And one more time, simply go 6, 12, 6, 12, and feel what that means now. Start slow, slow, go 6, 12. I said it quickly, but do it slow. And feel now whether your spine is sliding way more down and then being pushed way more up. There's a lot more movement in the spine. There's a lot more movement in the head. There's, you are doing 6 and 12 with a lot more of yourself. And now do it quickly and feel what that is like. And leave it alone. Straighten your legs. Rest for a moment. Feel what it means to be you right now, how you feel, how you breathe, the length of your spine, the feeling of the length of your spine, your legs, your feet, and slowly roll to your side, bend your legs, roll to your side, sit up, and then continue up to standing. There you go. And just stand for a moment and get a sense of yourself in standing. And how you breathe in standing. And feel whether, again, you're getting more this a bit ape-like posture, right? The arms are now hanging. The spine is long in the back, bearing the weight. The head is tall on top of the spine. Feel the way your feet are and feel how much freer your chest is, that you're not holding up the chest. The chest is not what holds us up. The chest hangs on the skeleton, on the spine, and it's the back that holds us up. It's, and walk around and just feel what it's like to walk when you have more of your pelvis available, more of your pelvis there for you. That's right. Feel, very feel your steps. You know, it's like it's the walking is done mostly with the movement of the pelvis and the lower back and the legs are just little things you put your weight onto so you don't just fall forward. It's like spikes of the wheel of a bike. But the movement, you can think of it as you sliding in the, from the center, you're just bringing the weight forward and the legs just stop you from falling. There you go. Thank you, thank you very much. Enjoy. And as always, remember to pay attention to changes that you feel spontaneously in your daily activity. And by the way, those changes are not just movement changes. They can be concentration, they can be creativity, they can be emotional changes. Notice any kind of change and not everything necessarily is associated to the lesson, but very often things that happen shortly after the lesson, within a few hours or a day or two, are associated to the changes that occurred in the brain. Thank you. What did you think? Fascinating, huh? So you'll keep seeing improvements in your movements as your day goes on. And if you have pain, 
that will be reducing also. If you can, get your own set of videos to use at your convenience. Just follow the upgrade link on the page here. That's especially good if your schedule is tight this week or if you'd like to repeat the sessions in another month or two. It's easy and we'll ship DVDs to your home and give you immediate ongoing access to the sessions online. We have a special offer for you and a very practical bonus, but the offer will end after the Neuromovement Healing Fest finishes. The bonus is a pack of 39 5 to 10 minute guided lessons for on the spot healing and pain relief. They go perfectly with the sessions you're experiencing this week, and you'll access them through your online library. Now, if you know of anybody who might be interested in these sessions, please encourage them to get a free pass at yourhealingfest.com. That's www yourhealingfest.com. These sessions can work wonders for anyone with restricted movement or pain in their body, as well as those who are interested in heightened mental functioning and peak performance. There's still time to join in and experience the sessions. Do come back for another 30-minute session with Anat. This is Pete Bissonette from Learning Strategies. I'll be with you here next time.